Hi guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC mom who loves science, here today to bring you CC Cycle 1, Week 5 Science Experiments. And those are number 60 in your Van Cleves, called Oily Feathers, and number 61, which is Tangled. Now before we get started, we'll go over our scientific method. The scientific method is question, research, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, conclusion. So today's experiments, we're going to be continuing our study of pollution. So last week in week four, we talked about water pollution and how even one drop even though it may be in a big pond or ocean and we can't see it very well anymore, it's still there and can still affect um, the animals and plants who live there. And so today we're going to talk about a few other forms of pollution. And so the first one, this will be a, a tutor demonstration, the oily feathers. And we're going to talk about um, like soap pollution. And you ask the students if they've ever thought of soap as a pollutant and so we can see um, how that affects um, for example ducks so what you're going to start with is you need a, a clear container or bowl um, with some water and make sure it's clear because you'll have the students come around and, and observe what's happening and you'll need some vegetable oil about a teaspoon and you'll need some powdered um, soap so the the Van Cleves said dishwashing detergent, and I just realized that I bought laundry detergent, but it seems to work pretty well. Um, so I'm going to use the powdered laundry detergent, but if you can find dish detergent, that'll work too. Um, so I'm going to use about a teaspoon of it, so I've already measured it out. And I would suggest maybe pre-measuring it because I tried to pour it into my water earlier, and it just kind of went everywhere. got way too much. So maybe pre-measure um, your laundry detergent and I have a spoon to stir and have some paper towels on hand um, in case you need to wipe up any water. So we have our water here in our clear container and we're going to pour just a little bit of oil in. Like I said, about a teaspoon. I'm not going to measure it, but I'm just going to put a little bit in. And then have the students gather around and you're going to observe what's happening. So I'm going to try to show you what is happening and hopefully you can see. So the oil is forming large globules. It's not really mixing with the water and you can ask them if they remember from cycle Three, where we learned about different densities and so the water is has a higher density than the oil so the, the water is going to be below and it's going to be lifting up the oil which is less dense but the oil is kind of forming large globules it's sticking together making these big pools of oil so you can ask the students what is their hypothesis when we add the powdered soap like what's going to happen and get their their hypotheses. So I'm going to just sprinkle this on top of, let's see, I'm going to bend it so you can see what happens. Try to hold it while I do it. Okay, I'll show you better in just a minute, but I'm going to sprinkle this on top. And then I'm going to use my spoon and gently mix it. We don't want to make bubbles with the soap, but we are going to mix it together and see what happens. We're just mixing that detergent, that soap, powdered soap, in with the water and the oil. It may take just a minute or two to kind of get it all mixed together. Okay, I'm going to show you kind of what happened. Let's see if you can see. So you can see, hopefully, 
that there are no longer these big globules of oil. You can see really tiny circles of oil, but they're no longer those big clumped together globules of oil. And so soap, it has, its soap molecules have a special property to where one side of the soap molecule is attracted to the water and the other side is connected to the oil. And so because of that, it allows the water and the oil to mix. And so that oil no longer kind of creates a barrier on the top that they, they mix a little bit better. And you might even be able to observe that some of the oil actually sinks after you add in the soap. And so why is this important to know? Well, for example, ducks, God created them to be able to make their own oil that coats their feathers. And that's what helps make them waterproof. Like we saw before we added the soap, that the oil kind of is separated from the water. They don't mix. And so if a duck has oil over its feathers, it makes helps make the duck waterproof and helps it to float. We'll say if they were in a bird bath or a pond that was soapy, that those soap molecules would allow the oil in their feathers to mix with the water. And so water would get into and under their feathers and it would make the duck heavier and it would make it really hard for them to swim. It may actually make them sink because they're so heavy. So the oil in their feathers helps keep that water out of their feathers, keeps them lighter and makes it easier for them to swim. So if there was a lot of soap in the water, that the water would seep in and make them really heavy and make it hard for them to swim. So soap can actually be um, a pollutant. So that's kind of the, the idea behind that experiment. So for something that we may think may be good, could actually be harmful for um, something else. So we just have to be good stewards and being aware of what we put into our environment. And does it belong there and is it, and is it harmful? Okay, so the, we'll move on to the second experiment. And this one you can have um, the students participate and try. So this one is called Tangle. And we're going to talk about um, like plastic garbage. And so if you can, like try to like save an example of this, like from um, some soda cans or um, energy drinks or like the, the Gatorade bottles that hold them together. Just show an example in class of this. And so ask, you know, what would happen if we just threw this um, into nature or into the water? Like what, would it be harmful to the animals that live there? And so you see what their thoughts are, what would happen? And so then you're going to hand out um, rubber bands or you could use like, even like hair ties, elastic hair ties. But how, get Give each student a, a rubber band. This is going to be like one of our, the rings of, of this plastic. And so you're going to have them put it on the back of their hand. So you're going to loop it over your pinky finger and your thumb like that. And then you're going to ask your students if they can get the rubber band off their hand without using their mouth or their other hand. And to just have them work on it and say, you know, is that hard to get off? You know, sometimes they may be able to get it off, but, um, you know, ask him, you know, well, if you were a fish and you could just, you know, move your body side to side, you know, would it be as easy to get off? I mean, we have a lot more movement in our hands than maybe a fish or a turtle would if they got something like this stuck around them. They may, you know, like a turtle, he has, it's, there's not as much mobility. So this could be really hard for an animal to get off. And so it's just being aware of what, what just, you know, a little bit of trash can do. And so Nicole Liam has um, some really interesting visuals. So like there's that same, those plain, same plastic rings and it got stuck around this turtle. And so its shell actually grew differently because it was constrained in the middle. Um, and there's a net on this, on this um, seal. And there's a rubber band that seems to be on this fish. Now take a look at this. This is a plastic bag. 
it looks, you know, from afar, if you're not looking very close, it looks like a jellyfish. And that is kind of what a sea turtle thinks of when it sees something like this. It thinks that it's a jellyfish and will actually try to eat the plastic bag. And it's really harmful to, to the sea turtle. So um, it's just being aware of, you know, making sure we're, we're putting our trash in the right place. And if we just throw it, you know, into the water or, you know, on the ground and um, an animal finds it and gets stuck or tries to eat it, it can be really harmful to them or they could even die. So we'll be um, just learning to be good stewards of, of creation and um, putting our trash in the right place. And so, you know, making sure these rings are, are cut like take some scissors and cut these rings so that nothing could get stuck inside and throwing it in the trash and not just, you know, in the park or, you know, next to the lake. But and that helps um, take care of our creation and God's creation. And um, that's really important. So those were the experiments for week five. And we'll see you guys next time.